us to higher levels welcome to today's edition of the daily dose i thank you for your time i thank you for your encouragement i thank you for your support i give god the praise for it today we're going to take us a little walk in judges and we're going to talk about a man named gideon a man that god chose to deliver the children of israel from the midianites in judges chapter 6 verse 1 the scripture says, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian for seven years. Because of their course of action and the way that they had been operating against the Lord, God was the one that delivered them into the hand of Midian for a determined time. The Midianites began to prevail over them. In other words, everything that they did, it did not profit because why? That God had released and raised his hand of grace from upon them and he delivered them unto the Midianites. But then it came a point in time where their crowd began to come before the Lord and God seemed fit where the seven years was up to deliver them. So this is where Gideon came in. Now we're gonna go to the 12th, to the 12th verse, the 11th verse. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was an Ophrah, that pertained unto Joash the Abazirat, and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. See, the Midianites were oppressing them and they were controlling their food. They were rationalizing their food, their cattle, everything that pertained to them, the Midianites took control. So Gideon was a man chosen that he was threshing wheat and he was hiding the wheat so that they would have food to eat. So at this point in time, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him. And that angel said unto him, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen on us? And where be all his miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Father, I pray that you would anoint these lips of clay. I pray, Father God, that you would enlighten the eyes of our understanding. I pray, Father, every heart would be receptive unto your word. I pray you would strengthen us with might by your spirit in our inner man. I pray, Lord God, that every heart, every soul, every eye would be tuned in unto you. I pray that you would remove scales off of the eyes. I pray, Lord God, that you would remove the veil. I pray, Lord God, that your glory, your anointing, and your power would be delivered unto us, O oh God. I pray, Father God, that that you were speaking that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. When the angel of the Lord appeared before him, the first thing he did was declare Gideon a mighty man of valor. No matter what the situation was, no matter how much the Midianites were oppressing them, no matter how much it seemed he was going through this and going through that, the angel of the Lord declared him a mighty man of valor. What I'm saying today is it does not matter what you are going through. It does not matter your depression, your pain, your financial crisis or situation. Declare yourself a mighty man of valor. So what happened right then and there, the angel of the Lord declared and decreed something before he even told him what he needed him to do. Gideon said, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened unto us? This is a question that the world, the church, continues to ask. You figure because I'm going through this or I'm going through that, that the Lord is not with you. The Holy One of Israel, he neither sleeps, neither slumbers. He will never leave you, he will never forsake you. He is always there, he is omnipotent, 
he's omniscient and he's omnipresent. He sees all and he's everywhere at all times. But Gideon could not see through the pain. He could not see through the stress. He could not see through the problems that he was having because of the oppression of the Midianites. So he could not believe that the Lord thy God was with him. He said, why have all this happened unto me? Why am I going through so much pain if the Lord is with me? And where be all his miracles that our fathers told us about? This is what I want to stress today. Where is all the miracles that we read in the scriptures? Where is all the miracles that the prophets talked about? Where is all the miracles that Jesus said would go on? He said we would do greater things than which he did. Where is all the miracles? Saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt, but now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, go in this thy might, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites, have not I sent thee? Once you have determined that you have a word from the Lord, once you have determined that the Lord has sent you, you go in the might of that word. You go in the power of that word. You go in the glory of that word because that word cannot return unto you void. That word cannot come back without accomplishing what it please, according to Isaiah 55, 5 through 7. So shall my word be that coming forth out of my mouth, it will not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall go to where I have sent it. When God releases a word in your life, we look at our time period and look for a microwave miracle and we, we withdraw our faith. That is the worst thing you can do is get a word from the Lord and withdraw your faith because you begin to limit the hands of the Holy One of Israel. You begin to put that word on pause because why? You withdraw your faith. The greatest thing Jesus said was be it unto thee according unto thy faith. He spoke to certain ones and said, I have not seen such a great of faith, not even in Israel. For why? Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. What I'm saying in this new level, in this new prophetic age, in this place that we are going into right now, your faith will have to be into the area of not withdrawing your faith. You cannot pull your faith back. You must continue to believe no matter what if you know you have a word from God. And the scriptures, the eternal word of God is a for sure word that you can stand on and they will not be depleted. What I'm saying today is that you are a mighty man of valor. You are royal priesthood. You have been chosen. It does not matter what you may be going through. It does not matter who supports you. It does not matter who follows you. But if God has said you are a mighty man of valor, you are a mighty man of valor. If he said you are above and not beneath, you are above and not beneath. If he said you are blessed coming in and blessed going out, you are blessed coming in and blessed going out because greater is he that's within you than he that is within this world. So pull and draw strength from that greater one. Pull and draw strength from the greatness that's within you. Pull and draw strength from being more than a conqueror. Pull and draw strength because for the simple fact you have been raised up and seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I declare you are a mighty man of valor. You are a mighty woman of valor. Your kids are kids of valor. So you got to begin to pull that greatness out. You got to begin to lift this up. Because why? As a man think it, so is he. As a man think it, so is he. Begin to see yourself through a different lens. Begin to see yourself as powerful. Begin to see yourself healing the sick, raising the dead. Begin to see yourself operating according to the power of the word of the Lord. You are a mighty man of valor. 
mighty man of valor. It has been decreed and declared no matter what you may go through, no matter what pain you may go through, no matter what's going on in your life, you are still a mighty man of valor and everything will come together at its appointed time. Tarry you here and wait for the appointed time, mighty man of valor. What I'm saying today is that you are a captain of war. You have the kingdom of heaven lodged within your spirit. You have the image and the likeness of the almighty God surrounding you in glory. There's only a few things you need to straighten out where you can cause these pending deposits to be deposited within your life. You are blessed. It's there. All spiritual blessings have already been contained for you. All you got to do is place yourself in the atmosphere of the blessing and you shall receive it. What I'm saying today is you may go be going through some things today. You may not understand some things today. You may not feel that you are a mighty man of valor. But when the angel of the Lord declared it unto you, no matter what you are doing at that moment, no matter what is coming against you, no matter if the Midianites are bringing you into oppression, you are still being declared a mighty man of valor. So what I'm saying is this here. Second Chronicles chapter 32 verse 7 says, Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid nor dismayed for the king of Asherah, nor for all the multitude that is with him, for there be more with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and fight our battles. We have not come to the place in our consciousness of our soul to begin to trust God to fight our battles so therefore in our worry in our stress in our depression we take the battle out of his hand and we try to fight it ourselves and the majority of these battles we cannot fight ourselves we cannot do it ourselves we cannot trust in the arm or the confidence of the flesh he said the people rested upon the words of Hezekiah. What I'm telling you today, you are a mighty man of valor, so I'm telling you to strengthen yourself and rest upon these words. I'm telling you to strengthen yourself and build yourself upon these words. I'm telling you the Lord is going to fight your battles. Rest yourself upon these words. You are made in his image. You are made in his likeness. Rest yourself upon his words. You are more than a conqueror. Rest yourself upon these words. You are the greater one. You have the mind of Christ. Rest yourself upon these words. In the midnight hour, in times of trial, even in situations you may not even understand why it's going the way it's going. Rest yourself upon these words, mighty man of valor. Rest yourself upon these words that the battle is not yours, but the Lord's. If we can gravitate our soul into the consciousness of knowing that it is not our battle and let the man fight the battle, get out the battle. You just continue doing what you're supposed to do while he fight the battle. Be strong, be courageous, do not be afraid. Do not even be dismayed for the multitude that's coming against you. Do not be dismayed because there's more with us than there is with him. I remember one time Elijah had to, had to ask the Lord to open his eyes that he could see that there was more with them than with the enemy. And God opened his eyes and he saw a multitude of hosts of angels, warring angels all over the countryside. He couldn't see it before, but see, you got to begin to touch God and you will be able to see into the second realm, into the second heaven, and you will see. I have actually saw the battle going on 
amongst the demonic activity and the angels of the Lord. I have saw into the second heaven. I have saw into that realm where demonic activity is placed. I have saw into that realm where your prayer is trying to fight through. You got to know that the Lord is on your side. You got to know that he is here to help you. He is here to fight your battles. What I'm saying is gravitate to a higher level of consciousness. When you gravitate into a higher level of consciousness, see, once we get to a certain place, we're going to go into some other things pertaining to entrepreneurship and pertaining to wealth. And we just, we're going to begin to touch a lot of different areas. But we, see, we got to get our, our consciousness to first trust in the Lord. You got to trust him. It may be hard sometimes, but you got to trust him. You may cry sometimes, but you got to trust him. You may not understand what's going on, but you got to trust him. You may not understand why some things are going the way it's going, but you got to trust him that he's going to work it out. You got to trust him that everything is going to line up. See, I know I have a mission upon my life. I know I cannot let anything come against that mission. I know I have to press toward the mark of the higher calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I'm telling you today, behold, former things have come to pass and new things do I declare. And before they spring forth, I'm telling you of them. Watch God work. Watch him breathe on it. I prophesy today that some people watching today, your minds are changing. Your heart is changing. There's going to be a greater desire to see the miracles of God, a greater desire to see a movement of God, a, a greater desire to see God move in your families and your children. No matter what you see right now, you got to trust Him. I declare it and I decree it today. Uncommon miracles. Miracles that you going to know that it was because the prophet has spoken. Miracles that you going to know is because it had to be God and nobody but him. Right now, the desires that you have upon your heart, the things that you need, I declare a manifestation of it. I declare these things to come to the surface. Phone calls that you were waiting on. Approvals that you were waiting on. Just that you may put the fleece out and God can show you that he is on your side and he is fighting your battles. Get ready to sign the papers. Your approval is in. The approval. I keep hearing approval. Approval. Whoever needs an approval, even if you've been denied, if you feeling to go back, it's time to go back because God's gonna turn the tide in your in the favor in your favor. God's gonna change the minds. You're gonna get an uncommon phone call saying, We changed our mind because God is in control. I thank you. Like, share, subscribe, because we're going somewhere. And I appreciate you. I'm praying for you on a daily basis. Remember, approval. Approval. And God's going to do it. It's coming. The phone's going to ring. I thank you for another day. For your support. This is George Dominique, Cousin for Christ Ministry. Signing off once again for another episode of The Daily Dose. Where man don't live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, do man love. Behold, he's finna do a new thing. Not new to him, just new to us. Praise God. I lift him up and I give him glory. In Jesus' name.